as we close up this chapter, this is our last section about managing the business. There are some really good clues in here that can help you an awful lot. It depends what your role is, what you plan on doing with you as an entrepreneur. Know your customers. It's a big deal. You know, there was a really good deli that we used to go to all the time called New York Deli. They, they would fly in the bread dough from New York. That's where they got their name. And New York's got a special thing about the dough that they make. It just tastes good. And her sandwiches were spectacular. The former owner that had that owned the business when we first started going there, he was a bit crazy. I mean, so, so literally the first time I walked in, I had a nice white shirt on and a tie. I come to the counter and and and, and the clerk at the counter says, oh, it's your first time here? I said, oh, yeah. She says, oh, well, with your sandwich, we always make certain. Do, do you want ketchup or relish in it? I says, well, not really. She says, well, the ketchup, it goes on like this. And she pointed the ketchup bottle at me and squirted the ketchup right at my white shirt. Well, of course, I freaked out for a second, but it wasn't ketchup. It was really crepe paper inside the thing. It was hokey. It was corny. I came back. So that being said, the owner would come out on a regular basis unless they were packed behind the counter, and he would tell stupid dad jokes. Now, just so you know, you might have noticed that I like dad jokes and really bad puns. He did the same thing, and they were hokey. They were corny. Everybody did the fake laugh thing and everything else, but everybody liked it. He had a personal relationship with the customers there. He wanted to retire, run off to Costa Rica or San, South Carolina or whatever it might have been. So he retired, sold it to his lead baker, who always spent her time in the back room baking all the bread for all the sandwiches. She was an introvert. She sat down there and, and business wasn't going as well because she wasn't talking and everything else. And it just got a little bit worse. You can kind of tell because the ice cream cone didn't get repaired over here. And this, it's just a small business. And, and, and the more it became more frustrating for her, the more she withdrew back into the kitchen, hidden her dark office and everything else. I talked to her and everything else. And finally, she went out of business because she didn't pay attention to her customers and that business had been built on that personal connection between the owner and his clientele. And they liked each other, even though he was corny, even though he was hokey, he knew he was corny and hokey too. And so did the customers, but we all liked it because of that personal connection with the owner. Know your, your client, know your market, know what you want, know what they want, make them happy, offer top quality and get fair service at a really good price. Not all businesses stay small. Okay. The Mattel founders, Ruth and, and, and Elliot Handler, they started in their garage making picture frames and they evolved into, into this worldwide toy company in the process. Whenever you hire somebody, hire, train, and motivate them is critical. If they make something wrong, you tell them about it and, and tell them your expectations. Don't leave things unsaid that should be said because you're shy. It's your business. One time I had I had my my, my dentist. I walk in the dentist's office and I, and he's leaning up against the wall and he's he's there and he's looking. And I use this illustration later on too as well about management. So he's leaning and he's listening. I says, What are you doing? He says, I'm listening. Are you spying on your dental hygienist? He says, yeah. I says, don't you feel guilty about that? He says, when you walked in, whose name was on the door? Mine or hers? Well, yours. No, I don't feel guilty about it. It's my business. My name is there. And you want me to give you good business? Here's part of it. How do you argue with that? He wants to make certain that my services are exemplary. So he's watching what he tells them that they're really doing what they're supposed to do. Pretty good. Pay attention. A lot of small business people, they stay around for years and years and years, even if their pay isn't as good, their benefits aren't as good because they like who they work with. It's a big deal. Keep records. This is so easy. A lot of entrepreneurs, just so you know, have been accused of ADHD. Okay, they have a short attention span this big. That's pretty common. Okay, so that being said, if that's you or it's not, you make certain your accounting is well done. A lot of people get hung up on accounting and they lose their business because they have sloppy record keeping. Business failures by poor accounting practices leads to costly mistakes. It can gobble your, your money up, especially in the crucial time when, when business is bad and you go through a lot of money, we call it money burning in the process. So you burned a lot of money and your cash burned. And so you have a problem. Keep good records. Five mistakes. Too afraid to commit. They hire the wrong people. Don't hire friends. I, I don't think you should ever do that. You hire somebody that does a good job and you might make excuses for a friend. 
Don't make excuses. Hire the right people. They don't want to give up control. Sometimes you need to sit down and find somebody that can do something better than you can do it. One time I made a mistake. I had somebody in the business and I was giving them a fabulous deal and everything else, but they would do the cleaning for me. They left me high and dry. And to be honest about it, I got somebody in. I saved, I've saved about one third of what I was paying them and they're doing a better job. I made an exception because I was blind by friendship in the process. Okay, make certain you have put the right people in the right spot. Don't become complacent and accept things for what they are. Always go for the best. And don't fail to use new technology. If new technology is out there, learn it, get it, use it, thrive, and brag on it and everything else that you're keeping up. It's a big thing. Look for help out there. If it's free, then get it. Legal, tax, accounting, marketing, finance. You know, one time... I, I went through four different people for, for marketing. The first one was recommended by the corporate office of a franchise. And so I'm listening to them and everything else. And it was okay. It just didn't do it for me. So I hired somebody local. She did fine for about five months. And then she really crashed and burned on a personal life and everything else. I got to hear all the sob stories and everything else. I didn't care about her sob stories. And sorry about the lack of compassion. I wasn't paying her to deal with that. I was paying her to do her work and she failed to do her work. Corporate recommended another company, and they were another bad fit. They just simply weren't out there. And you know what? A guy that I trusted, my general contractor, of all things, trusting a contractor is an odd thing. Just so you know, the construction industry is not known for having competent people. This guy was competent, and he was honest. He said, my little brother is not going to start a business. Can, can he do yours? Relatively cheap. And you know what they say about the aspect of hiring somebody that's, if you want technology, hire somebody, a college kid. I hired a college kid, 19 years old. I've had him ever since. Now his business is not just mine. His business is over 30 other clients out there. He's fabulous at it. He does well at it because of the fact that I looked for somebody in marketing and I got an expert that really knows social media by the time it's all done. A lot of times if you hire a lawyer, lawyers will suck your money out of your wallet and put it into theirs and drop of a hat. So be careful about using them. Make certain that the scope is limited and you only use them for exactly what you want to. Try not to use their services. If you need legal services, there's several online services that can do the same thing. There are a group of people in your county, whether it's Orange County, California, or any county that you're in, they are retired and bored out of their minds, and they're really smart, and they want to do something. The Small Business Administration has a program called SCORE, Senior Core Retired Executives. Now, I did this when I was going through college. My professor in business he was part of SCORE, and part of the thing I had to do is I, I, I volunteered for extra credit. I want to get an A. Okay, just boom, maybe, maybe you do too. Okay, so, so I went and I went to an auto parts store, and I helped him with this inventory management and had a really cool program in the process. But that being said, there's a lot of people out there that are bored and want to help. The only problem you'll have with them is, number one, they're free. Number two, they have stories they want to tell, too. So, so be careful. They'll help you, but they also want to tell their stories. So be patient in the process. But they might help you save massive amounts of money and to find new markets by using this free service over there. Small business exporting, we used an export firm that helped us years ago when my father was running a lumber company. We were cutting down the premier trees, not, not clear cutting the forest. We would go shopping into a, a, a forest with maybe 10 acres of land, find two or three trees that were uh, black walnut or red oak in the process. We would cut them down and then ship them over to Europe, especially in Germany. We use an export firm to do that and they help facilitate that. We made quite a bit of money for a while in that whole process. So pay attention to that technological advances, you don't have it there. It's old fashioned good safety because one of the most hazardous businesses out there is cutting down trees. So we had to be really careful. We ran a tight ship and worked out really well. Some of the things about exporting okay, hurdles, you gotta find financing because anytime you do international business, it's risky. And not knowing how to get started, that's why you find the experts and work on cultural differences because there's a lot of them, even with countries that you think would be similar in culture to you, there's differences because of the fact it's a different country and they wear different lenses and their glasses than we have over here. And a lot of time, anytime you do international, it's a lot of paperwork. Keep on top of technology. Okay, 
people like technology, but sometimes they like the old fashioned stuff just as well. So, so, so pay attention to your clients as to who you're selling to. Global trade, overseas buyers enjoy dealing with individuals. A lot of people around the world like dealing with Americans. We tend to be a little bit too abrupt possibly for their taste. And I, I agree with that as well. It, a lot of times the advantage of small business is a small business. You can ship faster. You can provide, really get a wide, wide variety of suppliers and really get personal service and attention for the global aspect from small businesses. There's so many big companies out there and people are turned off by that. A lot of people want to help the small business person. Know your market, track your financial records, train your employees, be clear as to what you want with all of your employees. And if you aren't getting it, tell them, do not let them get by with doing sloppy work because your name is on the door. Use people's talents, especially when you're already paying them. Take care.